Hello fellow Blenderers, I'm Lopai and today I want to show you how you can speed up the weight painting process significantly by using Auto Normalize. This video is meant for intermediate users who have grasped the rigging process at least a little, though I will go over some of the basics. Also note that this method is primarily focused on organic characters. For today's video I want to introduce you to one of my new characters. Say hello to Elizarin. Oh, wait. She cannot wave back at you because in order to do that, we would need to animate her, which we need to rig her for. The second step in rigging is weight painting. Weight painting is the process of telling each vertex how much it should move with each bone. This is represented by a color ranging from blue, which is equal to zero weight, to red, which is equal to a weight of one. It looks similar to a heat map. Let's get started by parenting our mesh to the armature. This is where we can do our first time saver. Select your mesh, shift select your armature, and then press Ctrl P with automatic weights. Make sure that if you don't want certain groups to get automatically weight painted, you need to disable the deform option of the bones in the armature's edit mode. To do that, select your armature, go to edit mode, Select the bones you wish to not get automatic weights, like for example, these hair bones here, and press Alt W. And then you can click on the form, and it's gonna disable the deform option. If you want to enable the option on a bone again, press Control Shift W. As you can see here, it says enable bone options, click on the form, and it's enabled again. I'm using this right now to make the body mesh ignore the hair and wing bones when applying the automatic weights. As a side note, later I will merge almost all the meshes into one for optimization purpose, but for now it is easier to keep them separate. Now before we jump right into fixing the formations in weight paint mode, we need to go over some options first. So I'm going to weight paint mode. Let's turn on symmetry, because the body is made symmetrically. Even though currently I am using a mirror modifier, so it wouldn't really matter. Then in the tools panel, I like to open up the dropdown for advanced and for falloff. Because in here you get the options front face only and front face falloff. And in order to paint through your mesh, you can disable these two. But to actually paint well through your mesh, you also need to make sure that your falloff shape is set to projected. Next up in the weight painting overlays, at the top here, I will turn on zero weights set to active, which will show me exactly what vertices are considered part of a vertex group, even when they are weight painted a value of zero. So as you can see, it all looks black now instead of blue. And if I select the bone here, you can see that only the area that is actually assigned to this bone has a color, while the rest remains black. This will become important later. In any version prior to 4.1, you can find this overlay option in the regular viewport overlays just further down here. Lastly, on the armature, I set the viewport display to be in front and display as to be stick, because this way I can see my mesh better. All right, select your armature, shift select your mesh and go to weight paint mode. You can select a group you want to paint by alt clicking on the bone. In versions prior to 4.1, this shortcut was control click, but now control inverts the brush you're painting with. It's time to get weight painting, and I'm going to show you how exactly auto normalize can save you a lot of time. Normally, you would select a group deformation you're not happy with and paint the weight until it looks right. However, since each vertex has usually more than one group assigned, as the model has an organic transition between bones, you will need to jump back and forth between the adjacent bones to fix your own weight painting job. One more thing that is important to note is that all your weights on a vertex should add up to one, which when you don't normalize them, can exceed one. You can normalize them manually by heading to Weights, Normalize, or Normalize All which will adjust your weight proportionally so they do add up to one. But that may ruin your weight painting job and you need to fix your weights yet again. 
To check your group's weights on a vertex, you can press 2. In old Blender version, the shortcut was V. And then Alt click or Control click on a vertex. Head over to the item section in the end panel and they will show up here. This is an easy way to debug vertices which fly away from your mesh. I rarely need to use this because auto normalize makes sure my weights are all nice. Now you should slowly understand where we are headed with this. By using the auto normalize option, whenever you're painting, all your groups on a vertex get automatically normalized. This works best when a vertex only has two groups assigned and you can imagine it like this. A vertex has a weight of one assigned by one group and now you paint over that area with another group selected using a strength of 0.7. The weight of the first group will then automatically be reduced to 0.3. This also works with more than two groups, though results may vary in quality. Note that auto normalize may also add weight to a vertex group when you take it away from another. This is why we need to know if a vertex is assigned to a group even if its weight is zero, because auto normalize may add weight to a group we didn't want it to. To remove an assigned vertex, head over to Weights, Clean. In the pop-up, select All Groups, turn on Keep Single for good measure, and set the limit to a small value like 0.01. Any vertex group assigned which has a weight of equal or below this limit will get removed. One final word of warning, the gradient tool as well as smooth option do not work with auto normalize. What you can do to make it work is first use a gradient tool or smooth and then go over all the vertices using a very light blur brush as this will then apply the auto normalize effect. Finally, with the setup done, we can get started weight painting. For this demonstration, I'm simply going to fix the pelvis area here. It's not perfect, as I would need to invest a little more effort into it, but you can see how much faster it is than simply manually removing and adding weights to each bone, instead of more or less only having to add weight to either one group or the other. And as a little bonus, I will show you when it is nice to turn off the front faces option like I described earlier by painting the tail. There we go. It looks like a decent curvature. That's it for this video. I hope you understand how to use auto normalize now. It's still required to use it effectively and that this will help you speed up your workflow. And look, at least the lizard can now wave you goodbye. We have a brand new Discord community, which is all about being creative, themed around a fantasy steampunk world and building, and is there to just connect to new people and also help each other out in our creative endeavors. It would really help me out if you were to like and subscribe here, but I think it could help you out to join the Discord, where we can just work and chill together. You'll also be notified about new video releases and when I'm live streaming. Thanks for watching and happy blendering!